Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is a sort of extension to the previous video that I did on attributes. Uh, these are another five, maybe, yeah, five attributes uh, that are more script based or utility based rather than inspector and variable based. Now that'll make a little bit more sense when we actually get into it. So if you haven't watched the previous video, I'll pop a little card up at the top there, go and check that out. And then when you're ready, we'll get started. So the first attribute I'm going to show you is probably one of the most common and you may have not even realized that it's an attribute. So if we just go ahead and create a new script, we'll call this weapon and we'll open it up in Visual Studio. Now, what we want to do, we want to make this your bog standard scriptable object. And we'll just put in a public string weapon name, just so we have something in here. Now, above our class, like I said, this one you may have used before, we add in a create asset menu attribute. Now, this takes two parameters. The first is a file name, which is a string, and the second being a menu name, which is also a string. You can also pass in a third parameter, which is an integer, which defines the order in which this will appear in your menu. But what we're gonna go ahead and do is give our file name a name. So a default file name will want to be new weapon. Simple stuff. And just as simple, our menu name is going to be whereabouts in the hierarchy when you right click and go to create, you want this object to be. So what we'll do, we'll create a folder called assets slash, so that will put it in a subfolder. So we'll do assets slash new weapon. So now that we have that, we jump back over into Unity. When we right click, create, we see now we have a folder called assets and we have, I already have a um, something that I'm working on in here so we'll ignore new conversation. Uh, we have new weapon. When we click that, it creates a new instance of a weapon scriptable object. And like I said, most of you may already know that. I just thought we'd ease into it, but now we'll get into the good stuff. So if we just take a look at our script that we created in the previous tutorial, say we wanted a way to populate all of this data automatically. Well, we can do that if we, if we open up our script and we can do this with the attribute context menu. Now context menu is a method related attribute. So what we can go ahead and do, we'll just create a public void set defaults. And inside defaults, we'll set weapon name equal to some name, weapon description equals some description. And just to be quick, we can do damage values dot fire damage equals 25, damage values dot shot damage equals 10, damage values dot physical damage equals 5. So we want to be able to call this method from our inspector. So above the method, we'll add the attribute context menu and this takes one parameter which is a string which will be what the button's called in the context menu so we'll just set this as set default values so we save that and jump back over to unity we click on our weapon if we right click our script we see that we have a set default values button there if we press that everything populates in the in the inspector. Now obviously this is just a very simple use case, but I'm sure you guys are gonna be able to come up with your own really useful ones. And very similar to context menu, we have a second one called context menu item. 
Now this one again is a variable based one. So what we can go ahead and do, again, this is just a very basic use case. You're gonna be able to come up with something much better than I am here. But if we add above our weapon description, a context menu item, then we need two strings here. So the first string is gonna be, again, what we want the button to be called. So we can call this clear description. And then the second one is a method name in string format. So I'll show you what I mean by this. So we'll just call this clear desk with a capital C and a capital D. This is case sensitive. So then if we create a public void called exactly the same, then inside we can just set our description to nothing. Now, when we go over to Unity, we should be able to right click on weapon description and we'll have a clear description. And as you see, we can't do it on weapon name or anything else. It's just for our description. We click clear description and there it goes. And one more that I'm just gonna show you before we go into my favorite attribute is we have a require component attribute. Now, if we put this above our class, require component, then we need to pass in a type of, and then for example, we want a rigid body 2D. So now, what we're telling Unity is, our attribute tutorial class requires the type of a rigid body. So this should take some of the work away from you. So we just remove that. If we put this back on without doing anything else, we can see automatically we have a rigid body and you can have as many of these require components as you need. Another useful thing, if we try and remove this component, Unity won't let us because attribute tutorial depends on it. So yeah, really useful. So now onto my favorite attribute. I'm just gonna need to set up a couple of things so I can show you how it works and then I'll be right back with you. Okay, so what I've gone ahead and done is I've created a player script wherein all that happens is every one second we lose one HP. And I've attached this to the player here. So the attribute in question is called menu item. And what menu item does, it allows you to create custom utilities inside the inspector. So I'll show you what I mean. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new C sharp script and I'm gonna call this debugger utils. We'll open this up in Visual Studio and we don't need to start an update. We don't need to be inheriting from mono behavior because this isn't gonna actually be attached to a script. So we're gonna need to create a method. So we'll do public static. Any menu item needs to be static. Void, we're not returning anything. And we'll call this player max health. And all we're gonna to wanna to do, we're gonna do game object dot find object with tag player dot get component player dot hp equals 100 so put simply all that's going to do is that's going to find our player in the scene we're going to get the player component and then we're going to up the hp to its maximum value so we want to be able to call this from our editor during runtime. So what we can do, above this method, we'll add in the, that's a point. We need to be using Unity Editor to do this. We can add in our menu item now. Now this is going to take one string and what it's going to be is it's going to be your tool by name. So we'll just call this debugger utils. And we'll put a slash to add a folder. So these utilities are to do with our player. So we'll call that folder player. And then finally, we want the button, which is going to be max player health. So if we save that, jump back to Unity. 
we no longer, well, not no longer, we don't need to put this on an object. But what we can see is we have a folder up here called Debugger Utils. We have that folder Player, and we have our Player Max Health. So if we play our game, and we select our player, we can see that every one second, our HP goes down. But now, if we select our Max Health option, we can reset our player's HP to 100. Now, I find this particularly useful when I'm debugging a game, or if I just want to give myself an in-game cheat menu, sort of like a developer's god mode. And what's good about it is you can do literally anything you can think of. Another example of this is when you're setting up a shop menu, uh, you don't want to go ahead and play your game up until the point you get your 10,000 gold to unlock your last weapon. You can add a debugger utils to automatically give you 10,000 gold, so you can go ahead and purchase that weapon. And again, just to cap this off, I'm going to plug Naughty Attributes. If this isn't mine, it's a free add-on available through GitHub. Uh, like I said in my previous video, this is a ridiculously useful package. I'm surprised the guy doesn't actually charge for this. But he doesn't. He's providing it for free. And what it does, it gives you a lot more attributes to play around with in the inspector. Some of which you didn't realise that you needed until you saw them. So I'll definitely give this a go. It's easy to download, easy to implement into your project, works perfectly, and by the looks of it, he's still constantly updating it. The last commit was six days ago. So yeah, would recommend. If you've learned something today, then drop a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. You can also find us over on social media for more bite-sized Unity and C-sharp tips. I've been Mike for Comp3 Interactive, and I'll see you again soon.